So um, we're recording now. I'm excited to talk with you. I appreciate you setting this up, man. It's been cool to see your updates um, with your business, man. It just seems things are rocking. Everybody's intrigued by what you're doing. Um, you've had a little bit of a different journey with this whole thing because you've kind of taken the principles, but then like really run with it in a, in a little bit of a different direction. So I think that's, I'm excited to kind of dive into that with you a little bit. So um, why don't we start with like how you got into this whole thing? What's your, what was your backstory? Um, how long you been in the business? How'd you get into painting business pro? Just lay it on me. Well, um, how it started was, um, you know, I um, was looking for a class um, because uh, my uncle, I got tired of paying his bills. He's been a professional painter for like 30 years. I know marketing, branding. I have a branding company. I understand marketing. I understand social media. Uh, I just understand how to leverage the influence that I do have in order to uh, do something big. And so I figured that, well, I'll start a company. I'll do the administrative part and I'll allow him to actually run the company because I was tired of paying his bills because he couldn't find jobs. So, um, you know, I did just that. Uh, I decided to start the company, but I needed some information on structure. I needed some information on types of paint, almost like a college instructional class. And so just yeah. a Google, obviously you had some strong SEO, some search engine optimization. And so you came up as one of the top uh, classes. And so after clicking on the classes, reading the reviews, I decided to go ahead and give it a shot. And so uh, after looking at the class, I went through various things or what have you. And, uh, you know, like I say, we, you know, he has a lot of experience, commercial as well as residential. Uh, so, um, you know, I decided to take a dive at it. And I, like you said, I kind of broke all your rules. Even when you talked about the commercial part, uh, the warnings you gave, I kind of did the opposite. You know, our president says the first rule of business, breaking the rules. So um, I actually broke the rules. Uh, but like you said, I took the pr general principles and the knowledge and the information that was within the classes to be able to apply it to a larger spectrum. Uh, even in some of your stories, we started off residential. Uh, everything was going well, but I'm looking at the profit margin. I'm looking at the amount of time. I'm looking at dealing with customers and clients that really don't understand what they want or they want the world, but they only want to pay for the city block. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's great. And so, and so it was frustrating dealing with the people. And uh, on one of the last residences, uh, or whatnot, like you say, average profit margin, three, 5,000, you know, a little smaller jobs or whatnot, but it adds up when you do 10 to 15 of them. Uh, and so uh, with this last job, it was an utter disaster, kind of some of the stuff that you said where you end up losing, you know, uh, there were issues there with the walls, uh, issues there with the paint, you know, they get the cheapest paint uh, possible. And so I ended up losing about five grand on it. And I said, you know what, uh, you know, the residence is just not for me. So I say, let's dibble and dab and see, will these principles work uh, in the commercial side? I mean, even with the pitch, uh, even with uh, generating leads, et cetera. Uh, because most of the time when it's a principle, it's transferable to one arena to another. And so uh, I decided to take your principles and say, let's try this on the commercial side. And so we uh, solicited a uh, doctor's office uh, and that particular doctor's office, um, I want to say around 8,000 square feet or something like that. And, um, you know, we end up profiting, I want to say about 12 grand from it. I said, hold on, this is a little bit different as it relates to my profit margin. So let's see, can we continue with the commercial? Because I'd rather, you know, get the bigger bang for my buck. But as you instructed in many of the classes that uh, the dynamics are different. You know, every job is different. The scope of work is different. The, yeah. uh, everything is completely different. So you have to approach each job uh, as if, uh, you know, you don't know anything, <laughs> basically, because your scope of work may be different. Uh, the structures, the wood, or whatever type of material you're painting may be different. And so uh, we did just that. Uh, and like I said, I said, well, this is pretty good. I can make a pretty decent uh, living off it, and I won't have to pay my uncle's uh, bills anymore. <laughs> and, and so this is pretty good. And so what we did is we just started you know, almost kind of like door to door, but we start doing it with organizations, schools, federal government, you know, because what I find out that many of them have renovation budgets because I used to work for the state and many of them have educational bu budgets, they have renovation budgets. And I uh, come to find out many of your schools and organizations like that like to paint their buildings interior every year. And so uh, we started with some schools and some other uh, offices and it just took off from there. 
That's amazing, man. So yeah. what's, when, when did you start this? Uh, we started, I uh, incorporated the business last February 28th. Uh, All right. Paint job uh, on April, in uh, April 2018. So First job was April 2018. So it's been 13 months. 13 months. How are things going? Yeah, what's, what's, what have you accomplished in a year? The first year, uh, like I say, you know, I did probably 200 grand uh, or whatnot. And that was like, like I say, we really didn't do a whole lot of work as it relates to uh, going from organization to organization. It was kind of like testing what works, uh, understanding the laws here in the state, understand procurement because you're dealing with state and federal entities. So I began to kind of research and find out how can I maximize the, the program on the commercial side. Yeah. Um, and so it was kind of testing the waters. Yeah. I made, I made what I made last year in, in one month in January. You see, in, in January. <laughs> it was the first six figure job. Uh, and one of the things that I did too uh, was, which once again, breaking the rules. Uh, we get on these jobs and a contractor not come through or a contractor get fired and they'd ask, can you do it? Sure. <laughs> it was simple as finding a sub as you instructed so thoroughly in the course, um, just simply find a sub. Uh, one of the, the, the methods that you, um, that you taught was just simply find a sub, allow him to bid on it, you know, and you kind of know your overages or whatnot. And so you just kind of add some administration costs and a little profit and you know, taxes and all this stuff. And I came up with a good, I came up with a good model that I've been applying from entity to entity and I'm able to profit uh, probably anywhere from 60 to 70% off these jobs. So if I have a hundred thousand dollar job, I'm, I'm bringing home 70. That's amazing, man. It's, it's been amazing. And um, one of the things that I've been able to do is basically find out what is the budget for the renovation? What is the budget for the building? The reason, the way I've been able to do that is simply go to the school board meetings and stuff like that where it's public information. Okay, we only have $1.5 million uh, for renovations, right? Right, $1.5 million for renovations. And in the meetings, they break it down. Well, you know, we have this that can go to this, this that can go to, oh, you have $250,000 can go to painting. Ah, so now it gives me an opportunity to have information to be able to utilize in, uh, in the process of gaining the jobs. Um, another thing that I mentioned to you, um, I'm not sure what you picked up on, is understanding the applicable laws. Here in the state of Mississippi and a couple of other states in the South, uh, is that if you keep the job below a certain amount, you don't have to bid it out. What do you mean by that? You don't have to bid it out. So if it's anything under fifty thousand dollars in the state, uh, in in the state of Mississippi, and it's a few other states too, I think Alabama, um, that you come in not as a GC or general contractor, you come in as a service, and there are some benefits to this. Are you ready for this? I'm ready, man. Lay it on me. <laughs> there are some benefits to this. What well, the benefit is, you don't have to buy the supplies. The state buys the supplies at a wholesale rate, which we cannot get. I don't care what type of deal we have with Sherman Williams or any other entity or whatnot. So they buy the supplies or whatnot. The only thing about it is that we cannot get a deposit or what we call in the contract a mobility fee, where they give you a certain amount of the money up front. So what I did was uh, just, you know, you start getting a large amount of money in. A lot of people want to spend it. What I did was I saved it because I knew that that other jobs may require a certain amount of capital or a certain amount of liquidity. So we call it floating the job. So you're gonna to have to basically assume all the responsibility for payroll and expenses, supplies, et cetera, up front. And so it allowed me to take on larger jobs without the headache of worrying about getting paid. You see, so just basically good management. And uh, as a result, you know, I can carry, you know, pretty much whatever job right now. It's amazing, man. So what, uh, what have you, so 2018 was a lot of learning, which is just so great, man. Cause I, I think a lot of people get into business and I like this business because it's need based. It's not going anywhere. The competition is not very good. So I can always get a piece of the pie. Margins are good. So like I can get started in it, but people think people don't have enough patience and you know, I think last year, like you didn't get in this business for the results you got last year, but like you said, in one month, you made what you did last year. Right. So mm -hmm. I think that's a good lesson for everybody that look, the, the getting in this business, I'm still learning. Like 
the lessons I've learned in the last few years, I'll make more money this year than I did in the last few years, right. you know, and I'll make more money the next year and the next year. And what I'm going to be making five or 10 years from now is going to make what I'm making now look like nothing. Right. So I think there are people got to understand that, but what, yeah, what we're going to say. Well, well, education, I took time to educate myself and that's one yeah. of the things that your program did. It helped, uh, it helped educate me or whatnot, help, you know, kind of some, you know, I, I'm, an old, I, I'm an old believer that, uh, if I see you stumble, if I see you mess up, I should be able to learn from your mistake rather than bump yeah. my head. If I see a scar on your arm from a burn, it lets me know not to touch that particular stove. And so I utilize those lessons, the stories that you told us, say, ah, I need to avoid those. And so when I got into those situations, I was adequately prepared, uh, yeah. you know, for those situations because it, it was like, I heard this before, you know, I, yeah. You know, even though it wasn't my experience, it was your experience. And so I think that many business people, because like I said, I have multiple businesses, they don't take time to, to get educated in that field. Uh, and that was me. I had called you, I think, maybe about a month ago from a 601 number. And I was calling you because I need even more information on the science of painting now. Because, you know, man, this thing has, has morphed in something incredible. Because now, because of the amount of stuff that I'm painting, um, you know, firms want to hire me as an expert witness. So I need to be able to come in and say, well, when mold is prevalent, paint does this. When moisture is prevalent, when the wall is at 60% moisture, paint does this. You, you see, and so now they want to pay me for the knowledge that I have, which now becomes another strength. Yeah, that's wild, man. So what's, uh, so last year was 200,000, made whatever you made. What, so right now, today's what, May 7th or 8th? May um, 7th. Man, I have, if I look at my feet, going so far. half a million, I'm probably, so, and, and we haven't really been just really, really busy, but I've had some huge jobs, and uh, the bulk of my work will be done in June, in July, uh, because we have uh, some huge contracts, we're getting ready to do another cafeteria, uh, we're getting ready to um, do uh, several schools and several districts, so I'm slated to probably do about a million, million and a half this year, easy, just probably without even you know, just blinking. Yeah. And I'll probably, and I'll probably clear over a million. That's wild. Um, that's really wild. So what are your, uh, now that you've kind of got, you obviously stumbled into this. It was literally, let's stop paying your uncle's bills. And now here you are like, yes, absolutely yes. crushing it, man. I need to, I need to learn a thing or two from you. So and what we found out too, is that schools uh, and these entities, they have to paint every year. So now what we've done is after we paint, we, we've just ventured into something else, which is crazy because now I'm always thinking about streams of income uh, yeah. and consistency, sustainability. Uh, so now what we've done is entered into what you call service contracts. And so now those schools we painted, we come in quarterly just to kind of touch up, you know, refresh, if anything's peeled. Any, so now I'm on residuals in multiple schools. That's amazing, man. So what are your, what, now that this is like kind of blown wide open for you, what are your new what are your goals now like what are you working towards do you have or are you just like hustling and, and just getting it well, well actually my end game is because like i said i stumbled on this and, and what i really want to get into because every millionaire mostly have uh real estate in their portfolio so what i want to do is use some of this equity to transfer into an investment company where i can invest in uh some of the houses i can invest ultimately have a couple of apartment complexes own those apartment complexes yeah create residual income. The goal is residual. See, this is active income. So I have to be present. Yep. I mean, it's not like yours right now where, you know, you can step away for six months and you got people that can be able to do it. Right now, this is active income. For me, it's passive income for you. So the goal is to create passive income in whatever stream that I'm, that I'm operating. So as I expand the building, I hire the, the business, I'm going to hire more people to be able to to run the daily operations to where this becomes passive for me and I can concentrate on real estate. I can concentrate on speaking across the country. I can concentrate on writing the books that I write, you know, things of, things of that nature. But ultimately it's to get it to real estate to where I can get those residual uh, dividends. What are your, uh, what are your other businesses, man? I own a branding company, a uh, marketing brand. I used to handle the social media accounts for celebrities, uh, you know, uh, Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that. Uh, you know, content management, stuff like that, what to post, what not to post, uh, just basically managing, you know, the do's and don'ts. Uh, look, you're getting ready to go pro. You just got a $15 million contract. Uh, these are things that you shouldn't do. This is how you should set it up. <laughs> they need this, you, man. <laughs> this is how you get verified. So because people will come out and copy your account, so you got to make sure you get verified. and Just, you know, different things like that. Yeah, very you know, cool, man. 
you have you know, I'm an author too, so you know that's a stream. And you know, as you mentioned earlier, I'm a pastor. I have one of the largest churches in the city, so we get ready to build. And my paint company will be the one that's painting the building. <laughs> <laughs> Double hey, I life. love it. I love yeah. it. No, that's great, man. It's just exciting to see you, dude. It's really, really cool. Congratulations on all well, that stuff. Like I said, it's a lot of work and a lot of learning to do, and uh, a lot of things that the guys post uh, in the group. Uh, it's just amazing because, like I say, um, I, I got into some trouble. Uh, if you go down the timeline, the house that I lost the five thousand dollars on was when I posted the cabinets. We, we painted the cabinets, and they were wrong, and we had to go back and resand them. So it was either buy new cabinets or be able to fix it. So when I posted in the group, man, I probably had one hundred and fifty comments. You need to do this. You need to do that to be able to fix it. And so that community has really been helpful, even though people think different. We're not all monolithic, uh, monolithic. Uh, so we think differently or whatnot. And so just to get the different angles on how to do certain things has been an incredible resource to me. So not just the program is a great program, just being able to be a part of the community uh, is a great community. Yeah, I love it, man. Oh, I appreciate that. Um, just your contribution to it. You know, I know that motivates people, man, seeing everything you're, you're making happen is super cool. What, um, let's see, there's something I was going to ask you. Oh, I'll tell you what, Roderick, uh, Rich, does anyone call you Roderick? Uh, probably the first grade teacher, maybe. <laughs> so I was just like, it's your name on your profile, so I keep that. So that's what's in my head. So one thing that's going to come up from this, man, is I, I'm just guessing. I'm guessing when this goes out and gets posted on YouTube and I push it out there and just people hear your story, people are going to be, I have a feeling, people are going to be really, really curious about what you're doing. Um, so I'm just going to invite people, anybody who's watching this, if you're curious about that, you drop a comment below. Maybe we'll, maybe me and Rich will put something together. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, we'll see. What's that? I'm about education. So just, you know, and like I said, you've been yeah. a blessing to me and I just found you randomly. Uh, but I'm, I'm an adamant believer in the program. It's step by step. It's easy. Uh, you cover a lot of bases. In fact, you know, there are times when I go back and use it as a reference. Uh, you know, it's like, man, what did he say about this? And so kind of as a refresher. So uh, I'm an adamant believer, man, that uh, this program can really educate people who are serious about, you know, educating themselves prior to going into business. I think that uh, that this is a great tool. Um, I think it's probably better than going to college. I believe your return will be better than going to college if they purchase your program. Well, you said it, not me. And I love that. And that's great. I mean, entrepreneurship, man, you learn that stuff in the street. You know, so that's good stuff. So is there, I mean, you're killing it. Congratulations, man. I, I just, I, I, makes me so proud. Makes me so excited for you. And I, I know you're going to keep killing it, which is exciting. Is there anything I can help you with? No, it's, it's, it's always just a new, it's nerve wracking in the commercial side. Yeah. There's so many variables. Uh, yeah. And every site is different. And what I found out too uh, is that make sure that you have everything in writing because anything that's in writing is not real. Uh, secondly, painters get blamed for everything. So yeah. what I found out that, you know, this is almost more documentation than writing a federal grant. Because when we come in, we we're making, like I was on a job, we had did a cafeteria in one particular district. And, um, you know, we we're being punch list. And for all those who don't know what punch listing is, that's when at the end of the job, the, the contractor, the main contractor, or the project manager, or somebody who's overseeing the project would walk through the project and tell you everything that's wrong with your work. And so we were being punch listed, and the guy's walking through, and he said, uh, y'all y'all had, you know, paint right here. Y'all wasted paint right here. Y'all got, and I pulled out the documentation of prior to us paint said that paint was already there. Now, you can pay us to fix it, but that's not our paint. Well done. You see? Yeah. How did you, so that is one of the big things, man. And it sounds like you've really done your homework on the commercial side of things. And I have friends who I've, I have two of my best friends right now. One of them is in a, in a lawsuit type of deal to get $90,000. He didn't get paid. Mm -hmm. And then another one, um, they're kind of going back and forth with a company that's not paying them about $140,000 on a commercial, on commercial projects. Mm -hmm. What what research did you do and what do you do to protect yourself in with, with all that? Because that sounds like you're really being thorough about that. So how did you get that information? I have a legal background. Um, and, and I have a legal background. So ah. in my legal background, what you do is you make sure that in your contract or whatnot, you have the ability to place a lien on that entity. 
What yep. happens is when you, as a contractor, you have the ability to place a lien on that. They'll come in, put chains on the door, and there will be no functionality within that entity until it's rectified. And so what happens is it causes uh, your client to want to move a little bit faster because it, they're losing business as long as the, the chains are on the door. And so, you know, I've threatened liens or whatnot. Okay, well, you know, you don't have to pay me. Um, there's going to be a chain in two days on your door, and nobody's going to be able to get in. You see, well, well let's, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. And I learned that from some old contractors who, uh, you know, who I've had opportunity to work with. Um, there was a particular contractor who uh, finished a job, uh, surprisingly, on the church, and the church didn't want to pay him. Uh, they owed him 200, I want to say $300,000. And so what he did was he placed a lien on the building. They came and locked it up, and he went on a seven-day cruise. You see, and so, you know, business is business. Business can be shrewd. And so that's why it's important to have everything in writing. So the person who uh, is in that legal, um, is in that legal jumble right now, um, I believe that he, he probably needs, if he has the ability to place a lien on that building and it changes the conversation because people don't understand the power of the contractor or whatnot. When I've worked on that building, I can place a lien on that building and nothing can go on in that building until that lien is resolved. Yeah. I, I know that some GCs will get like, try to get you to sign a lien waiver to take a job or they'll have you sign a lien waiver to pay you. Have you ever run into something like that? Uh, you say sign a lien? Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't sign lien waivers. Yeah. I, I don't sign lien waivers. Any company uh, that's trying to do that and won't give you the job if you don't sign it as a company, you probably shouldn't be doing business with. Is that your opinion on that? You said something that was, that was critical and I, and I live by it. You said that sometimes you have to have the ability to say no. Yeah. And, I, and you said it, you know, in one of your videos, and I, I remember it, uh, you know, quite descriptively uh, that, you know, sometimes a job that comes with all of these uh, nuances uh, that you have to say, you know what, you know, don't, don't worry about it. You know, I'm not bidding on it. I'm not even putting my name in the hat. I, I know that I can't prefer it by the superintendent, but no. And let me tell you why. And so if they're willing, you got to realize that I believe the blessing is at the table of negotiation. So you got to understand that if you're asking me to come in or whatnot, and you know that I'm going to be an excellent painter because I was referred highly, I came highly recommended, then we should be able to negotiate some of those things. I do not sign uh, lien holder waivers at all. At Good all. for you, man. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. It's impressive, man. It's exciting. It's exciting things. I'm going to have to pick your, I'm going to have to circle around. We're, we're really focused on just dialing in this, what we're already doing, but we're going to be shifting gears over into commercial and some of this other stuff in another year or two. You know, we've kind of got our game plan, but I'll definitely be picking your brain about all this cool stuff you're doing. And maybe we'll put something together based on the, the feedback we get on this and people just hearing about it. Um, Cause it's cool stuff, man. Well, I'm going to actually switch, um, switch pages and I'm going to actually dig into the residential but I'm, I'm going I'm to use your model to the T to where I won't have to actively be in it. And yeah. I, I'm at a time in my life where my energy is important. Yeah. Uh, so I don't want to have to spend a lot of energy and a lot of time doing something. So, you know, of course, my profit margins will be lower, but still it'll be a constant stream. It may not be a pool of water, but if it's a couple of glasses, that's more than what I, I had. And so, you know, I'm going to see if it's going to be worth it and so I can have the commercial side. Even my site is set up as a commercial side uh, and a residential side, because I'm not throwing residential away. I'm just, you know, I'm building up as much liquid as I can in order to dive into other things. Nice. And, um, and one of the things that paint has brought me, as I mentioned earlier, is that, you know, like I say, contractors will get fired or not show up or, you know, they're trying to uh, overbid and they'll ask me, can I do it? So now I'm doing uh, ceilings, I'm doing roofs. I'm doing floors. <laughs> I know, I saw that. <laughs> I don't know anything about floors. I'm telling you, I, this, I think a couple of weeks ago was my first time ever seeing a floor being put in. You know, I, you know but what, what I'm doing now, what I'm doing is because I, I do this when I train people in church all over the country, because I'm a consultant in that as well, is that I tell the pastors to learn everything about the ministry. So go spend time in children's church so you can see how that operates. Go spend time uh, with AVL, um, audio, visual, and lighting team, so you can see how everything works. So you don't have to necessarily know how to operate it, but you need the knowledge of it. And so, you know, the knowledge that I've gained just in those other areas allows me to uh, have a more critical eye when it comes to hiring those subs and them doing yeah. that work. 
And so I can, before even the guys come in, can punch list them and say, look, this is not installed correctly because it's something I learned on the last job. You know, that, you know, when laying floors, you got to make sure the tiles are all going in the same direction. The average person would know that. Because, you, you know, with just in the naked eye, the average person won't be able to see it, you know. But if tiles have certain treads, especially LBT. So I'm learning all of this as I'm going, but I'm not afraid to take on new challenges outside of that. Well, and I think just for anybody who's watching, it's important to note, folks, don't do this at home. Uh, there's a lot that Rich is doing that we haven't gotten into today. You can tell listening to you that, like, you're doing your homework. You're putting your time in. You're thorough. You know your shit. Like, there is a lot um, – to it so i wouldn't um i would still say, repeat what i repeat all the time which is don't go chasing money don't do crazy shit just because rich is doing it killing it maybe you know if you're really interested in what he's doing maybe we'll put some things together so you can see the the detail that you're obviously doing things with because you're not winging this no, no you no. are going after stuff but you're doing it in a very intelligent way in a thorough way and you're doing it with integrity um, and that's, there, there, I, I know there's more going on than we could possibly cover, you know, half hour or whatever. So right. procurement. Yeah, like I say, you have to understand procurement. Um, there's a certain way when you're working with state and federal entities in which you have to structure your invoices. Yeah. And so these are things that, you know, of course are not taught, but you know, you either learn as you go, you do your research. And I think that you use the, the correct word is doing your homework. And one of the ways that you can do your homework is constantly revisiting those videos. Yeah. Uh, videos that you offer, you know, provide as a great reference once you go through it initially. And I think that, that that's critically important. I'm sure that you're going to be adding videos and, you know, expanding on some stuff as you learn more. But I think that education uh, is critical. Uh, it's crucial that if you're going to dive into uh, this particular business because um, you can lose a lot uh, if you're uninformed uh, and if you're ignorant of certain things, uh, you can lose a whole lot of money. A whole lot of, especially what I see in underbidding, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, well, and, and that's the thing, too, is I think, like, what, you know, just to add on to that, it's like, there isn't, there isn't a get rich quick. There's no shortcuts, you know? And I think some people are looking for that, you know, like, oh, maybe this painting business is shortcut. I'm like, no, there's not. Like, it's a great business. It's a wonderful business. And it's a huge opportunity in it, but you still can't shortcut anything. You need to be, you need to go through the trials and tribulations. Like there were times where you were getting your ass kicked too. And that, there's no way around that. Like that's, that's just part of what happens, but it's how you react to that and, you know, put your time in and all that. And it takes time. Um, you know, yeah. I know how certain paint perform on certain surfaces and that came by being on the site. The class couldn't teach me certain things. Sometimes uh, the, the, the lessons come from the hard knocks and bumping your head. Yeah. And I definitely learned a lot, but I make sure that I document, you know, what I learned so that I won't repeat it because what you don't repair, you repeat. And so I'm learning, uh, you know, through various mistakes that I've made on those jobs, especially that house, man. That house was a disaster from yeah, I learned cabinets, that. man. We don't do cabinets because the cabinets can go bad. <laughs> yes, yes. But we, we found out a way to really do them to where, you know, like I say, just it's all in the setup. You yeah. know, um, you know, when it comes to cabinets, uh, we use, for one, we spray them. You never roll, you never uh, brush them. You always spray them. And also we add a, a decent amount of flood. Uh, and basically it's a stimulant that adds to the paint that allows it to go on evenly. And once you spray it and once you set it up right, it's all about the drying in. And so now we perfected it, but man, we, we almost bought some more cabinets. I was five, $5,500 in the hole on that job alone. So that was a bought lesson, you see. Yeah. Hey man, that's, that's the way, you know, and that's something I think people miss too, you know, is it just, it costs money to learn, but it's worth those lessons are worth their weight in gold. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like every time I've lost money, it, it it's, it's like, Oh, cool. I just needed to learn that lesson. I'm not going to make that mistake again. And literally my success is just built on the, you know, my, my failures, you know, failures just rungs on the ladder. You know, and there is no, there's no one who went from here to here, just not failing along the way. The failure is literally the rungs on the ladder. Um, and you can sometimes get your, your way up it by learning from other people's failures, like you talked about. But at the end of the day, like you're, you're going to fail in business and that's okay. That's literally how you succeed. And I think if people could flip that, you know, and stop being afraid of failing, but learn how to use it, you know, it'd go a long way. Definitely that. 
definitely that. Well, definitely, I appreciate your class, I, uh, your, your program. I appreciate your group. I appreciate your accessibility because you're easily accessible. Uh, but uh, you asked the question, what could you do for, uh, for me? Uh, where, what you can help me at is really uh, point me in the direction of just learning more about paint because uh, I can make a lot of money and yeah. a lot of uh, clients or whatnot who, let's just say, um, and like I said, I was asking, which of course I wasn't qualified, so I had to say no. I was asked to come in where uh, a contractor, another painting company, had literally messed up this lady's house and they were trying to say, well, it was the pain, it was the wall, it was this and that, but understanding the science of it, it was poor workmanship. But see, I have to be able to substantiate that through the science of it. Right. You know, every field when it comes to contracting has a certain science. And so I'm looking for information on, you know, that in, in, a, in a house fire, you know, what do paint do at a thousand degrees? You know, what do paint yeah. do at 1500 degrees? Uh, what does paint do when the moisture is is thirty percent in the air? You you know right. so now we'll be able to point in in court to say that you know um, that obviously there was some type of leakage from the AC unit that caused moisture in the house. This is why that paint messed up. It wasn't on the painter, right? So you know just just yeah. the science behind what we do. And I don't man, know where to look and find I don't it. either, man. That's outside of, you know, those are questions I've never asked. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's something that, you know, is relevant because like yeah. I said, you know, uh, you get a GC that, that, that goes on the stand as an expert witness and, you know, he understands structure, but he don't understand the pain. Yeah. Chemical compounds behind it. So, you know, I'm going to do my research. So give me a year. I'll yeah, man. Well, and the thing that's kind of cool about how that information being hard to come by is it makes you that much more valuable when you learn it, you know? So it's kind of like that, you know, guess it's kind of a, a good thing and a bad thing. If it was public information, it wouldn't make this thing you're going after too valuable. But when you, when it's that hard to come by, it's going to be that much more valuable when these big kind of lawsuits and stuff are going down. So yeah, keep me posted, man. Exciting okay. things are ahead for you. I tell people to make sure they have a good uh, accounting or accounting system. I understand accounting, so I can do a lot of my own accounting, uh, but I have one of the largest firms in the nation, but also a good lawyer, um, you know, and yeah. most people just, you know, legal information, most people's companies are set up as LLC. Yep. Well, LLC is limited liability, so it limits your liability on the person, but it does not limit the tax liability. And so what happens is you can get things like prepaid legal at $20 a month, $27 a month, $30 a month or whatnot. And because your LLC is connected to you other than an S corp, other than a C corp, those individuals can actually defend you at, at a low cost. You see, you'll have access to an attorney for those of you who can't afford a retainer. Uh, you can get those types of programs and be able to have, you know, adequate legal representation. It's a difference when you send a letter to an entity saying that we're going to sue you or a demand letter saying we're going to sue you uh, if you don't release our money. It's a difference when you write them versus an attorney. Got it. Whew. Man, you, you just, we could go, we could talk for hours on all this stuff, man. <laughs> All right, so anybody who's got more questions for Rich, you just drop those below in a comment or wherever you're seeing this video. And I'll keep my eyes, I'll keep my eyes peeled. Rich is dropping knowledge bombs all over the place. So um, <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Um, any, anything else, man? I, thanks for taking the time, dude. It's great, I, it's great to hear your whole story because I, I just see the little, little glimpses, you know, here and there. So it's cool to hear it all, and I'm excited to see where this goes in the next year, man. So I know you'll keep us posted. Uh, next week, I'm taking my uncle on a cruise because the last job, because labor is, is important. I told the subs, I said, look, if y'all give me, we had 40 days to complete the job. I said that if y'all get me out early uh, on the paint party, y'all get me out early, I'm going to take y'all on a cruise. We I had love 40 it. days to complete the job. They completed in 10. <laughs> You're like, I'll take you on two cruises. <laughs> you me so much money. And my wife was like, how much to cruise? I was like, baby, it don't matter. You know how much money they saved me? No kidding. I'm buying them anything they want when they get out. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. Oh, I love that. I love that. Well, dude, where's the cruise? Uh, we're going to go out of Miami. Beautiful. Yep. What, and you're leaving next week? Next week. Next week. Enjoy it, man. Yeah, you treat those guys to a hell of a week. And hey, we appreciate you. We appreciate you. you. We're, 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 I'm an advocate. 
a strong start supporter of the program. I'm an adamant believer. Uh, it is work. The principles work. And so uh, keep doing what you're doing. And there are people like me that's going to search you out. And I, I am uh, uh, definitely uh, an advocate of the program. And I appreciate you, sir. Hey, man. No, thank you so much for all the words, man. I just, I just love hearing the successes, man. So keep kicking ass. Thank you, my man. All right, Rich. Have a good day, man. Have fun next week on that cruise. Hey, will do. All right, see ya.